Thomson East Coast Lines is impact on the property market. Hi, my name is Alan from Alan Way Property. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about the opening of the Thomson East Coast MRT line and its impact on the property market. This has been long awaited by residents in the East. As the initial announcement of this new line was made on 15 August 2014. This followed by years of construction, road diversion and inconvenience to the residents. Finally, the train station has been scheduled to commence operation on the 21st this year. Here, do not underestimate the impact of the MRT station on property prices. You will be in for the surprise how much it has appreciated since the announcement was made. This is also to compensate for the sacrifice owners have to endure. Can it continue to appreciate even after the trains have been operating? What about resale properties around the corner? What about the aging HDB flats in Marine Parade to upcoming boutique projects? Are they worthwhile to consider? With that, I'll be covering the seven station along this line and study the impact on property prices. Here, let's go. The first stop will be Tangjong Ru. This station is located along mainly private condominiums in the Tangjong Ru area. Tangjong Ru is a source after area due to its proximity to the city waterfront living and proximity to the sport hub due to the stadium MRT station along the circle line. However, with the upcoming Tanjong Ru station right at their doorstep, this means condos around it from Camelot by the water, Casherina Cove, Tanjong Rail Condo to Pepper Bay and others were all white. Both in terms of capital appreciation, even though they are on 99 years leasehold and rental you. Let us randomly take a look at Water Place. There are 437 units with mainly 2-4 to four bedrooms. This is the most recent transaction. A 1,280 square feet, 3 bedrooms has already crossed the 2,000 per square feet mark for the condo that is already 26 years old. Is this because of the so-called MRT effect? Seriously, I don't know. What I only know in this area, the houses are decently spacious, practical design with curving balconies that overlook the waterway. Here, let us take a look at building design. When I look at condos that are designed today, sorry folks, they are solar and coal with the design skewed towards maximize efficiency in mind. This is in contrast to HDB BTO flats. I believe the designer's hands are also tight. It's time the authority should step in to correct this flaw before we go down this slippy slope in building homes that are nice to look at but not practical to live in. Next stop, Katong Park. This is located in one of the most prestigious address in the East, Mayer Road. Here, we have the going to TOP one mayor to source after condos such as the Belvedere and the Seafront on Mayer. From older resale condos like Arthur Mansion to Equatorial Apartments. Not forgetting Leaf at MB, which is under construction. Can the MRT station effect spill over to the landed properties along Margaret Road to Ramsgate Road? At the same time, can the MRT station revise the fortune of some cannot make it condo in the Fort Road area? Here, don't say just because they are freehold and sitting near an MRT station means they sure make money. I think you'll be too naive to think this way. This condo, which I prefer not to name, has seen its fair share of profitable and unprofitable transactions. It's only in recent years they see some light at the end of the tunnel. Let us move on. On the same note, there is another upcoming freehold condo in the Tanjong Ru area. This is going to launch soon. This project is known as Arena East Residence. I'll be doing a video once I have more information on them. This station is along Tanjong Katong Road South. Although it is closer to the Mayor Road to Amber Road area, as well as the Prime Lander Enclave along Jalan Seaview to Jalan Sedap. I wouldn't be covering so much on the condo in this area as I have recently done a review on Amber Park Condo Review. If you have not watched it, you can watch it on YouTube. Anyway, what about the opening of the MRT station onto landed prices? If we look at the historical chart for all landed properties in District 15 from 2014 to 2024, landed prices have already up 52% to date. Will landed prices continue to move forward? With TK MRT station outside their doorstep, what do you think? Here, for those who have plans to upgrade from your condo to those landed properties, my to liao, seize the day to sell high and buy high. Why will landed prices continue to soar by another 50% in the next decade? 
Don't say it cannot. GCB prices have already exceeded 2,000 per square feet today. Will this spill over to detached house, followed by CMED to inter-terrace? Will this also mean that landed property will be out of reach for most condo upgraders soon? Third stop, Marine Parade. If you have noticed, this is a damn long station. There are multiple exit points stretching all the way to Marine Parade, to the intersection between Marine Parade Road and Stilt Road. This means this station is 15 minutes walks to many properties around the vicinity. Here, I think owners living nearby have to give credit to MOT, LTA, and even the foreign workers who build these infrastructures. Next time, when you see our foreign workers' brothers, please remember to buy them some cold drinks, especially on a hot sunny day. Marine Parade Station will also become the face of the Thomson East Coast MRT line, as this is the town centre for those staying here. This means all the HDB shop house owners will also hoard to the Strata Title Office in Parkway Centre. That is why for those that are tied down because of ABSD and have spare cash, you will likely park your funds somewhere. Some good examples include office space. With improved connectivity, the rental you will go up. That's gold for return too. By the way, for those who are keen to get a brand new apartment near the Marine Parade Station, I have a low one for you. This freehold boutique development with 16 units is located along Jujet Place. It's known as the Street at Jujet. It's 15.1km to CHIJ Katong Primary and Head Girls. What is interesting is that this project has 5 bedrooms apartments. It measures 135 square meter or 1453 square feet. It comes with 5 bedrooms which is extremely rare in this area. What really attracts me is the price. The selling price is about 2000 per square feet or slightly above 3 million for a typical unit. Here, if you are keen to explore more, I have left the links in the description below. There are also other smaller boutique projects in my portfolio which include the 20 units Park Bella along Tembeling Road to the 17 units Kun Seng House along Kun Seng Road. Next stop, Marine Terrace. This is further up Marine Parade Road. This area is mainly more residential and near numerous popular schools from CHIJ Katong, St. Patrick, Nian Primary to VJC. So, who will benefit? Ayo. Needless to say, condos along that stretch along St. Patrick Road from Grand Judges, 70 St. Patrick to smaller projects there will all benefit. With an MRT station just outside our door, Chai Sen Ye come ready. How to go wrong? Then, what about HDB owners living across the road? HDB owners in Marine Terrace will also what? This government, very fair one. HDB owners can also benefit from government programs. This, after all, the East Coast plan. Anyway, out of curiosity, let's take a look at HDB performance in Marine Parade over the last 10 years. HDB owners have seen an increase of 8% during this period. Not too bad, but not overall fantastic. For condo with all tenures, they appreciate by 44%. And lastly, for landed, as earlier mentioned, they increased by 52%. This is a glaring big difference. Here, I can only assume that HDB flats have a depreciating lease. That is why it affects its performance. They are mostly left with less than 50 years. Zermapan. On this decaying issue, I am not HDB. I cannot advise you on this. I can only say you may want to pray hard they sell this place. But I think very unlikely. With upcoming Bayshore BTO flats, do you think HDB got no land bank? Another reason is because there are many seniors here. To resettle them, you will face many ground issues like those we saw in the Amokyo sir exercise. You don't compensate them well enough, also got issue. If I'm Jing Hu, so hard to please everyone. The best solution, let me get my mandate first and let everyone enjoy the ride in the meantime. Since Ver will not happen so soon, let me hand over this Kang Tao to the next in charge after the upcoming election. For the remaining two stations, I will briefly touch on them. C Club station will help to improve accessibility to residents staying in the C Club area to those aging condos such as Neptune Corp, to Laguna Park and others. This will help the rejuvenation of these older condos in the years to come. However, the high land premium to top up the lease could eat into their profit. Plus, they are massive condos that sit on huge land size. Developers must have deep pockets to undertake such risks. But most importantly, Seagraph Station will benefit beach goers, especially those going to the East Coast Lagoon Food Center. 
Last stop, Bayshore. This station is sitting on a greenfield site along Bayshore Road. Condos such as the Bayshore to Costel del Sol to the numerous condos along Upper East Coast will all benefit. Lender properties owners will also be smiling. Most importantly, if you look into the URA master plan, the authority has really put a prop ratio to this state land. What does this mean? Well, this is part of the Bayshore master plan as announced by HDB. There will be a mixture of HDB flats on a car lead road system integrated with a town centre and private condos. How much will the new condos be selling for? Does anyone want to make a guess? Anyway, it wouldn't be cheap, especially in the East Coast area. Here, I hope you have enjoyed this video so far. If you have any plans to sell or rent out your properties, I'm more than happy to assist you. Thank you for watching.